A lot of people think that new construction homes are hard to get into. I feel like I personally, it's sort of my sweet spot. Hello and welcome to episode 56 of the Smart Ages podcast. My name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. In today's episode, we're joined by Houston-based realtor, Jolie Farrig. Less than a year into her own real estate career, Julie first caught the real estate bug at a young age by viewing homes with her mom and being exposed to the different architectural styles. Today, Julie is building her own business and shares her story. Now, before we get on to the day's featured interview, make sure to subscribe to the Smart Ages podcast. You can find the show on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and now Amazon Music. Also, as you can see if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Click the bell to get notifications when each new episode is uploaded. And lastly, if you or somebody else on your team has an awesome story or a tip to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to the day's featured interview with Julie Farrig. The way I really like to start everything out is if you can tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're at in the country, and kind of how you got your start in real estate. Yeah, so my name is Julie Farrig. I uh, am located here in Houston, Texas. I got my start in real estate. Actually, it was really from a young age. I'd always loved real estate. I really like architecture. So I'd go into homes, you know, with my mom as, you know, a nine, 10 year old, be like, oh my God, this home is beautiful. You know, I, I, was just obsessed with homes probably from that age. Moving forward, I tried a couple of other career uh, fields, but I realized I really had a passion in real estate. So I decided to, you know, take the plunge and here I am seven months later, (laughs) knees deep in the real estate industry. (laughs) Right, right in the middle of a pandemic, uh, you know. (laughs) Yeah, perfect time to start. (laughs) Right. Well, you know, it's one of those things like you didn't have to adapt to anything that you had learned before. Right. So that's very true. You know, it kind of, I've talked to several people that have, you know, that maybe started right before the pandemic hit or, or that started during it. And that is the one nice thing that I've seen is that they haven't had to learn how to do all these virtual meetings with people and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I will say I had a heads up on that. I think if I would have started real estate probably at a different time. You know, obviously getting acclimated to the new life, having to change your gear towards marketing, having to prospect in any kind of different way. I mean, it would have probably just been, you know, a huge hassle. So honestly, I mean, COVID still sucks, but at least I had that one thing going for me. (laughs) Right, right. So, you know, as a new agent, how have you been making, you know, a name for yourself in the business? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've tried a lot of different things. Um, So the brokerage I'm with is called EXP Realty. And the great thing about EXP is they give us tools in order to prospect. So we use something called KV Core. Basically, Mm -hmm. I have met people through, you know, open houses. I've gone to some um, local events that we have had here in Houston. Houston's been um, opening up within the last probably seven, eight months. I mean, we started opening up pretty early. So, you know, there were events that I was able to go to and market. I think also it's important to keep contact with builders. If you're working with builders, uh, I've used them and generated and leveraged some business from that as well. And I've implemented all of that into KB Core. And so I'm able to kind of start different drip campaigns and um, other campaigns associated with, um, you know, targeting what I would need at the time. For instance, if it's a builder from, you know, trying to target more so um, sellers, buyers, you could do different campaigns. And uh, that's really helped me probably start my business. And uh, thank goodness I had a great mentor as well. Right. So you touching on that, working with the builders, how did you kind of form those uh, relationships to begin with, with some of these, with some of these builders to kind of kickstart that? Yeah, that's a great question. So actually my mentor is a builder. So he kind of helped tell me more about how to build those relationships. And what I was able to do is uh, my very first client was a friend of mine. And so he was looking at new construction homes. So we ended up basically looking uh, at a place called Maryland Home Properties. So uh, I went there, met with the builder and kind of just, you know, tried to form a conversation, not necessarily about real estate, just about life in general, build that rapport. And then I was able to give him my card and start business there. And, you know, it's just, it's cumulatively going and meeting these builders for other clients as well, that I've been able to build relationships like this. Right. With the market being as crazy as it is, what's it been like, you know, for these buyers that are looking for whether or not it's a 
you know, a home that, you know, is existing, you know, 20 year home that, you know, the listing came up, but then also these new home builds, I know they are hard to get into. You know, and a lot of people think that new construction homes are hard to get into. I feel like I personally, it's sort of my sweet spot. I, you know, with the way the market is, obviously it's not just a value market now, it's um, an auction market. There's a lot of new construction. A lot of areas are becoming gentrified in the Houston area. So it's really easy to, to look into that new construction sector. Whereas with resale properties, I think that you're basically having to have your, your clients sh- uh, shelf out, obviously more than the house is going to praise for. And I just personally don't feel comfortable with having my clients buy a home that won't appraise and it won't appreciate to the amount that they spent. So I have focused more on new construction and it's been pretty easy for me just building those relationships. I've been able to find out when other properties are coming on the market that not, aren't necessarily on the market yet. Right. So with the new construction, are you getting a lot of people, or a lot of your clients, people that are moving into the Houston area from out of state or out of town, or are they people that are just looking to upgrade, you know, that, that live in, in town? It's a culmination of things. Um, some people are looking to upgrade. I have, you know, first time home buyers since I am, you know, in my 20s, a lot of people my age are starting to want to buy homes instead of living in an apartment and obviously, you know, spending money on a lease, not having that money um, to turn into equity and that money would be dissipating. So everyone um, from new home buyers, I've had people um, just wanting to upgrade. I haven't really had a lot of people from uh, different states move into Houston. I've had people from Houston move out to different states, but I will say I've seen a lot of uh, bumper car uh, uh, license plates that say California and Utah. A lot of people are moving in from different states. Right. So outside of you know the creating these relationships with the builders and then what you're doing with the KB Core, um, how else are you kind of adding more and more people into your sphere? Yeah, so I use social media. Obviously, you know, everyone's on social media these days. So I'm um, doing uh, marketing through social media, trying to do some giveaways. Um, I think it's important to also keep in contact with everyone you've built um, these relationships with. So if it's even something simple as a newsletter that you send out every month, you can do that as well. Um, for me, some of the listings that I've sold, what I'll do is I'll have like door hangers and I'll create a door hanger saying like, oh, this listing sold in X amount of days. This could be yours. And I'll put that around the community in which the property sold at. And so that's a way you could also generate new business as well that I've used. Yeah. Well, I like that idea of the door hanger, you know, because like the last year, everything's been you know, the, the word virtual and doing everything virtual and doing everything online, mm-hmm. but really getting out and getting your feet on the ground and actually going up to the doors, that's, you know, especially if you're one of the few people doing that, that can really set you Mm -hmm. apart. Of course, you know, I will say, uh, when I got into this industry, I realized I'm not as extroverted as I thought. And I'm like, okay, some door hangers on people's doors, like, they're gonna open the door and be scared of me. And I I just thought, you know, this whole situation would uh, arise, but it's really been a breeze. And I know probably new agents are scared of doing that probably seasoned as well. I mean, I, I really don't think that it's something that it comes naturally to a lot of people. But I do think, like you said, it's a really great way to interact with others and it, it does set you apart because I don't know a lot of people that are willing to do that. <laughs> right, right. And I think, you know, I was talking to somebody else a while back that does uh, something similar and he's like, look, you know, I might get a couple of calls from canvassing an area with the door hangers, but those conversations when I actually, when somebody might be in their garage or you know, that happens to open up the door when I'm there, we've already, we've had that first conversation. There's no more cold call. There's no more, you know, it's already out of the way. Right. Exactly. And so that's what makes it easier. I mean, as long as you're willing to approach people and try, I really think that's a way to set yourself apart. As a child, you went to open houses and you were around the real estate business. So it kind of definitely gives you a leg up for new real estate agent, you know, on new real mm-hmm. estate agents. Um, what would you say to some of the newer ones that are getting into it that, you know, do have those fears of, you know, holding their first open houses or are looking at it six months down the line? Like, I don't have a whole lot of business. Can I make this work? Yeah, that's a great question. So honestly, what I would say to newer agents that are um, apprehensive about doing open houses or, you know, apprehensive about the field in general is, you know, it's going to be like that the first six months. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I'll be 
quite frank with you, it's very hard. As long as you stay persistent and you stay patient and you continue to grind and continue to work hard, uh, your work will come into fruition and you'll see, you know, a couple of deals, deals here and there. I will say that uh, after probably after the sixth, seventh month, you'll see some progress, but don't stop. You have to continuously push yourself. If you see deals coming through, if you stop, I mean, obviously you're going to get complacent and you're not going to want to continue to do your best. I think always try harder, always continue to try different marketing tactics and always understand the market that you're in currently because the market's ever changing. So you have to change your gears as well with it so that's what i would give uh as an advice piece to new agents right and you talked about having a really good mentor how important has Mm -hmm. that been to your success early on in your career it's so important i cannot stress i mean he's probably so annoyed at me he's probably like oh my gosh this girl does not shut up but you know (laughs) it's definitely helped me i mean you know obviously there's there's so many intricacies in real estate even just things that you won't learn in school when, when you get your license. And so um, those little things in the situations that I've been in that I I'm not well versed in, he's really helped talk me through that process. And, you know, in the first six months when I felt like giving up, which, you know, everyone is going to feel that way. My mentor pushed me. He's like, you're going to succeed. I see how hard you work. You're going to see that work come into fruition. And then when I did, it made me just want to continue to work harder. And I was thankful that I had that mentor to, to kind of pick me up when I was down. Right, right. When it, uh, you know, starting out in a market the way it has been, very weird market, Mm -hmm. very, you know, just kind of everything's flying off. How are you preparing yourself for when things kind of do shift? Because inevitably there will be market shifts. So what are you doing now to kind of prepare for those later on? Um, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm doing a lot of research and seeing, you know, when I think the market is going to start leveling out and figuring out more. So I've had marketing lately t- geared towards sellers. So I'm trying to work my marketing towards buyers and I'm trying to figure out, you know, I still do work with uh, people who are leasing apartments and leasing homes. So trying to really uh, build those relationships and make sure that I, I touch up my marketing materials and just obviously continuously reaching out to people. So even when the market does level out, they know that I'm here and they know that I'm here to help them and that I am well-versed in everything because they can see that I, I've slowly started shifting marketing when needed. It, right. If that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's, you know, okay. it's great to always kind of have um, little kind of you know, feeders out there for different things so that when people do see you, it's not, you know, when there is a shift or when you're going after a different niche, it's not the first time somebody's ever seen, you know, this side of, of you, you can always kind of go back and say, see, I have been doing a little bit of it here. Right. Yeah. Something I do um, in terms of my social media marketing Mm -hmm. is people, you know, nowadays you'll see, oh, this person sold a listing and all they post are their listings they have. I put like, here's the apartment that I just helped someone lease. Here's the home I just helped someone lease. Here's a buyer that I just helped. Here's a listing. I, I, I do even investments. Make sure I put it all out there. So I have like a little mix of everything and I don't, you know, I guess, like segregate myself to one specific niche. I, I open it up uh, and make sure people understand collectively what I do. Right. When it comes to the social media uh, and social media marketing, I think a lot of times people get a little overwhelmed with it. And then they're always, then there also is that question of how am I reaching my actual target audience? And it's not just going out, you know, out on the internet. And I'm actually getting people that are in my market that are seeing this. What are you, some of the things you're doing to do that? Uh, I kind of change up the different posts that I make. And the great thing about Instagram is if you create your Instagram as a business page, you can see the analytics and it allows you to see, um, you know, if men or women are looking at your Instagram posts and, um, you know, what times are best for you. And it's something, and Facebook has those analytics as well. So I really like take those analytics down. I kind of, again, change it up, tweak it to get, you know, my target audience, make sure that I'm um, going to be posting at a specific time, make sure that it's material that they like, finding a way to promote the material if need be. Um, it's things like that, that, you know, I think a lot of people don't understand, especially more seasoned real estate agents. They probably don't understand a lot about social media marketing. So those things I think are really important to assess how well you're doing and assess your growth. Yeah. And the thing I love about social media marketing, uh, the content creation, you know, it can seem really overwhelming, but that one piece of content that you create, you can repurpose it into a dozen different 
posts and a different, you know, so it really isn't as daunting as it seems. Yeah, I agree. I think <laughs> I have a couple of posts where it's on LinkedIn, it's on here, it's on there, and everyone's probably sick of seeing it, but it's generated me business. So, I'm, you know, right. it's just one of those things that people will remember you even if it's because they've seen the post 18 times, as long as you've altered it a little with the wording. I mean, oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, before we wrap up, what are some of the, you know, what are the big plans? What do you have planned for the rest of this year and then kind of moving forward? So I personally want to get into um, development and more into that the building side of uh, new construction. I really do appreciate that. I think, um, you know, my family, we, I helped, you know, build our family home. So going through that with an architect and, you know, everyone in my family is now in real estate. So meeting with architects, meeting with builders, it's something that I'm really passionate about. So it's something I would love to look into and go um, really kind of, head first whenever I get a chance. I now I'm starting to do that um, with a couple of investment pieces, but uh, probably just going more into investments and uh, helping people. I I really had a lot of people reach out to me saying, Hey, I want to get into real estate. What should I do? How can I be successful? And for me, I really care about helping others, even if it, you know, is something that isn't going to like people nowadays, I think are so inherently, um, focused on what they're doing, but I want to focus on other people's success and make sure that, you know, everybody can be successful. This is an industry that allows success from all aspects, not just for one person. It's something that gives and gives for everyone. So I just want to help other people reach their full potential. Something I'm looking into doing maybe one day being a mentor too. Yeah. Well, I think that's, you know, it's one of those things like this industry, I think a lot of people for whatever reason, um, I think it's a lot more collaborative than people give it credit for, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Right. So yes. like, I think it has to, you know, a lot of times it has to be because you are working with a, another agent in most deals, but a lot of people, you know, the, I think there is a little bit of a, a shift in the mindset that the more we help each other out and it's not so competitive that it's it, everything is mine, 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 that everybody's starting to realize that things are getting done faster and easier. And it's just making the whole process, you know, a lot better. Yeah, I agree. Um, honestly, and the great thing I think about being a newer agent is I can help somebody through the struggles that I had because they were not that long ago. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so <laughs> it's easier to like really assess and um, make sure that I am helping other people. I think a big thing too is, understanding like what not even just like other agents needs are but understanding what your clients needs are i think we talk so much and we don't really listen enough yeah and like you said you know a lot of the people in your age group you know they're starting to say i don't want to rent anymore i'm ready to buy and you've right you know you have that experience you know very recently so i think that's definitely a big help for you also I think so too, Michael. (laughs) Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk to me. Yeah. Thank you so much for um, inviting me to speak with you on your podcast. I hope you have a great rest of your day and a good luck to you in Florida. (laughs) I really want to thank Julie for joining us today and I hope her continued success as she moves forward on her real estate journey. So once again, if you think you or somebody else on your team has an awesome story or a tip to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode, but remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.